in a labyrinth filled with undead creatures, where Geldwood soldiers are being forced to retreat by a powerful necromancer known as the Corpse God. Sir Shagrua Edith Lugrid, also known as the Calamity Crusher from the Church, arrives with a support team of priests and priestesses led by Rakiria Lafalardo. Shagrua confronts the Corpse God alone, while his team remains on standby. The Corpse God possesses formidable magical abilities, converting the souls of the deceased and the surrounding land into magic. He summons a dragon, but Chagrua defeats it with a single strike. The two engage in a fierce battle, with Corpse God creating an army of skeletal warriors from scattered bones. During the battle, Chagrua reveals that he can see the souls sacrificed by Corpse God. As the battle intensifies, Chagrua manages to unveil Corpse God's true form, a brain suspended in a jar. Corpse God boasts about his power to manipulate lives and souls, likening himself to the Grim Reaper. Despite the provocation, Shagrua focuses on stopping Corpse God's unrecognizable magic. With the assistance of Rakiria, Shagrua charges forward, ultimately defeating Corpse God by piercing his spell with his sword. Before the Corpse God is going to die, he casts a spell, and then he reincarnates as a teenager named Polka Shinoyama, who awakens in a foreign and unfamiliar city with a severe neck wound. He struggles to communicate and navigate the unfamiliar surroundings, gradually regaining his language skills. He encounters police officers and is led away by Misaki Sakamiya. Misaki explains that she previously killed him and is determined to do so again. Polka recalls the past and the circumstances leading to his death. He manages to escape from Misaki but is pursued through the city. Polka enters an abandoned building where Misaki confronts him with a crowbar. Their confrontation escalates and Polka's abilities as the corpse god become evident. He escapes Misaki's grasp but is injured in the process. Seeking refuge in another room, Polka is confronted by Misaki once more. Their battle continues, and Polka's supernatural abilities become increasingly apparent as he converts souls into magic. With Polka incapacitating Misaki, leaving her pinned to a pillar, a flashback when the corpse god, who had once fought on imperial battlefields after being sold to the imperial court sorcerers by his parents. After the empire's fall, he sought a peaceful life and found it in the company of five youths, one of whom saw him romantically. Their peaceful existence came to an end when the children were killed by Geldwood soldiers, who believed they were liberating the children from the necromancer's control. In retaliation, the corpse god spent years exacting vengeance on the souls of the soldiers in an abandoned coal mine, turning it into a macabre labyrinth of corpses. Unable to die naturally, he waited for someone capable of slaying him, which eventually happened, and he performed a secret art of reincarnation. In the present, Misaki Sakamiya's life ends at the hands of the corpse god, but instead of dying, she is reborn through magic. Confused and bewildered, she encounters the corpse god, who informs her that she is now a zombie. Takumi, an info broker, is caught in the middle of these events, trying to make sense of the situation. Clarissa, a mediator in Shinjuku, arrives with her team, aiming to avenge Misaki but finding their plans disrupted by the corpse god's actions. The corpse god helps save children from a building fire, demonstrating his power to manipulate souls and magic. The corpse god contemplates how he can achieve peace in a nation where children still suffer. Clarissa offers to assist Polka in adapting to life in Shinjuku and potentially using his powers to make money. Misaki and Takumi are assigned to help Polka adjust to his new life. Takumi and Misaki help corpse god move into the torture building, which entails unpacking boxes of items courtesy of Lisa Kiraki, including stacks of books about Earth and setting up a computer for Takumi. Corpse God and Takumi discuss the former's cover story for Polka's family, Corpse God's speculation that his world and this world are somehow one world, and Corpse God's intent to investigate the client who commissioned Polka's murder since Lisa is sworn to secrecy. Takumi then learns that Polka's soul possesses the malfunctioning drone and is perturbed by how Corpse God treats souls as his toys. A man drops by to ask for Zaki's help in dealing with hitmen who are after him. That night, he leads Misaki into an ambush instead and shoots her when she defeats multiple grown men. She revives and attacks another wave of men until Corpse God acts on behalf of the infants whose souls haunt the man. Two great skeletal hands erupt from the earth and mold the remaining men into a human knot. Two men who escape the scene run to an armory, Lemmings kills them. In the aftermath, Misaki marvels at her lack of bullet holes while Takumi reevaluates Corpse God's values. Later, the three order pizza and talk about Misaki being a zombie. Corpse God reaffirms that he believes his world and this world is connected. Meanwhile, Lisa pauses her late night fun with Karuto and Izuna to answer a call from an unhappy client. She disputes the client's insistence that Polka is a mere high schooler, insinuates that the client lied about that from the start, and declares their business relationship on hold. A pair of patrol officers arrive at the ambush site to investigate reported gunshots. When Lemming shatters the human knot with a single punch, 
The officers come running and discuss men whose limbs are impossibly twined and intertwined. In Yudaokoru's external stairwell, Kazuburo Ares begs the mercy of three bouncers for whom he can only offer a deep bow. Then he knocks the men senseless. Inside the bar, Tsubaki acts drunk in a bid to extract information from Yurai on the Shakuzawa building fire and Clarissa, since he had come specifically to see her. He is told she has taken the late night shift, which is unusual, and he is all the more chagrined when duty calls, meaning he and Ares cannot wait until Clarissa's shift starts. Upon arriving at the human not seen with Ares, Iwanome admits that he was called with good reason, this sort of troublemaking is his team's specialty. Tsubaki of Comps 3 introduces various troublemakers to his team and explains that solving supernatural cases is their job. Three troublemakers are still at large, the Grim Reaper, Fire Breathing Bug, and Lemmings. Fire Breathing Bug is suspected of causing the Shakuzawa building fire, while Lemmings' footprints were found at a previous crime scene. Despite the supernatural appearances, these troublemakers are humans, and Comps 3 is determined to catch them. Meanwhile, Corpse God transfers Polka's soul into a stuffed shark toy, with Misaki unknowingly hugging the real Polka. They decide to replenish Corpse God's magic by exercising ghosts, or finding mana stones. While shopping for mana stones, they encounter Detective Kazuburo, who previously clashed with Takumi. Later, Ares confronts Corpse God and Misaki, warning them about the dangers of getting involved with Takumi and revealing his past with Takumi's gang. Misaki showcases her combat skills, and they flee with Corpse God's magical assistance. Takumi calls Ares to defend his friends, but Ares remains suspicious of their secrets. Back at the police station, investigators discuss Lemmings, a troublemaker with extraordinary abilities. Meanwhile, Tsubaki gets drunk and insists Clarissa's involvement with the Grim Reaper. Misaki and Corpse God visit Yudakoru, and Iwanome offers them juice but secretly plans to question them. When Ares arrives at the bar, the lights suddenly go out, and Lemmings appears, setting the stage for a tense confrontation. A confrontation unfolds in Yudakoru between Lemmings and the police, led by Ares and Iwanome. Clarissa advises not to attack Lemmings yet, as he hasn't killed anyone recently, while Kazuburo emphasizes capturing Lemmings, who is a nationally wanted criminal. During the confrontation, Misaki whispers to Corpse God that Lemmings is more frightening than the police. Ares' team attempts to apprehend Lemmings, but he displays incredible physical abilities, easily dispatching officers. Despite Ares' efforts to stop him, Lemmings effortlessly evades and incapacitates the police. Corpse God tries to cast the spell but hesitates, realizing that revealing his magic could jeopardize his peaceful life. He faces a choice between saving Misaki or maintaining his secrecy and ultimately chooses to protect Misaki. Lemmings manages to escape and takes Misaki with him. Corpse God creates a massive skeletal hand to catch Misaki, and the two flee the scene, leaving behind a wrecked bar. Later, Ares reflects on the confrontation, acknowledging that the police were ineffective and considering returning with more resources next time. Lisa points out that she's not willing to return unarmed. In another scene, Lemmings reports to Takaru Shinoyama and informs him about Jinba's murder. Takaru is intrigued and mentions Polka's return, indicating a hidden agenda. Corpse God starts a fortune-telling business with Misaki, Takumi, and the spirit Hasaroga's help. The business is successful, earning them a significant amount of money in a short time. When the twins, Kazuki and Shizuki Shinoyama, visit them, Corpse God tries to maintain the ruse of being Polka to avoid suspicion. Kazuki demands a fortune reading, and Corpse God assures them that Polka will return home soon. After the twins leave, Takumi shares information about the Shinoyama family and the potential motives for harming Polka. They decide to visit Polka's family home, where Corpse God plans to continue pretending to be Polka. Takaru Shinoyama, Polka's older brother, learns of Polka's impending return and expresses the need for a babysitter, while a smoldering spirit lurks in the background, observing the situation. Finally, Razan Shinoyama, the patriarch of the Shinoyama family, contemplates Polka's actions and his own fate. Shizuki, Kazuki, and Takaru Shinoyama welcome Corpse God and Misaki to the Shinoyama mansion for lunch. Misaki explains how Polka saved her on several occasions, which surprises Takaru since it's out of character for Polka. Takaru learns that Polka has befriended Sakamiya Steel's heiress, and Misaki corrects him by stating that Sakamiya Steel no longer exists. Takumi had earlier warned Corpse God to beware of Takaru, who is the president of Shinoyama Security, responsible for the group's dirty work. During lunch, Kiri, Takaru's wife, warmly offers Misaki help whenever she needs it. The twins, Shizuki and Kazuki, engage in conversation about Polka's shark plush and their love for shark movies. Later, Razan's nephew-in-law welcomes Polka back and mentions the Shinoyama Group's pharmaceutical division, but Razan shuts down the conversation. After lunch, Razan invites Corpse God to the mansion's annex for a private conversation. Razan puts a katana to Polka's throat, 
questioning his true identity. Corpse God is about to answer when he senses danger to the twins and rushes to protect them. He leaves abruptly, and a loud explosion occurs shortly after. Two years ago, Suzuka discovered a sinister plan involving her cousins Shizuki and Kazuki. She tried to warn her family but was killed by an explosion in the boiler room, which anchored her spirit to earth in agony. In the present, Bug leads the twins to an underground room surrounded by a firewall. Misaki confronts Bug, and they engage in a confrontation. Bug reveals his plan for a deadly fire. Suddenly, the building explodes, and Corpse God saves the twins. Takaru shifts his attention to the cleanup, and Corpse God catches Bug as he tries to escape disguised as a maid. The police arrest the true Bug, and Rosin's relative tries to implicate him. However, Yachigi and Lemmings, part of Takaru's Dragon Palace agency, intervene. Solitaire claims that Iwanome's description of Bug is incorrect, and the police realize they've been manipulated. In the police car, the imposter bug attempts to escape but is engulfed in flames, revealing the real fire-breathing bug on an overhead bridge, singing a children's song. Lemmings informs Takaru that Polka managed to reach Kazuki and Shizuki before he did, and Takaru is curious to learn more about this. In the annex, Rosin dismisses his bodyguards to grant Corpse God and Misaki some privacy. Corpse God reveals his otherworldly origin and implies Misaki's involvement in Polka's death. Misaki is unafraid and admits her culpability. A little shark plush, reminiscent of a young polka's affection for his pet crocodile, Shiro, intervenes comically, which leads to Rosin recognizing the plush as polka. He finds the situation absurd and offers Corpse God the option of using a Shimoyama group android as a vessel. Polka, in his enthusiasm, volunteers to become a robot with various modifications. Despite the attempt on Polka's life and his lack of interest in reclaiming his body, Rosin allows Corpse God to continue borrowing Polka's body for the time being. Rosin also acknowledges Misaki's role in saving his grandchildren and permits her to leave for the day. He speculates that the intermediary mentioned by Corpse God might be Lisa, someone he prefers to avoid due to her influential connections. Rosin contemplates the possibility of a family member wanting Polka dead as karma catching up with him. Outside the damaged mansion, Corpse God informs Takumi that he has told Rosin the truth. Misaki finally apologizes to Polka for killing him and thanks him for defending her. Polka seems more concerned about losing his textbooks and video games in the fire than his own death. The twins, Kazuki and Shizuki, express their gratitude to Misaki and Polka for saving their lives. Polka credits the fortunate alert Corpse God and the twins' guardian angel. Back in Tokyo Penitentiary, Iwanome informs Ares and Tina Soramura about fire-breathing Bug's actions, including incinerating a patrol car and its arsonist occupant. Soramura explains that Bug preyed on a mimic. Comps 3 holds an emergency meeting, and Iwanome briefs his subordinates on Solitaire's criminal career marked by magic tricks and illusions. Solitaire's motive is to prove the existence of real magic. Iwanome mentions that Solitaire's energy and technique are remarkable, and he became known for capturing and releasing high-profile political figures without any clear monetary motive. Corpse God shows off a vintage radio to Takumi and tunes it to a news channel reporting on the death of a suspected arsonist, confirming it's the Shinoyama arsonist. The news then shifts to a report about Tina Soramura. In the Shinjuku police station, they watch a news anchor who is reporting on Solitaire's prison breakout despite Iwanome's media muzzle. There's confusion as to how Solitaire managed to take over the airwaves. Seo, presenting herself as Polka's niece, introduces herself to Misaki and Takumi and brings along her attendant, Zaioyu, who is supposedly a trainee butler. Misaki doesn't need an introduction as Seo remembers her from a previous encounter. Corpse God questions Seo about her arrival, and she cryptically mentions that her shark-themed bedroom was destroyed in a fire. This prompts Zaioyu to play a video of Rosin asking Polka to accommodate Seo and Zaioyu temporarily and provides a convenient reason to have additional security around, mainly Zaioyu, whose presence Corpse God can detect. Corpse God wonders if Seo herself might be a Shinoyama with an ulterior motive. The next morning, Zaioyu quickly starts cooking breakfast and explains that he was assigned to guard Seo due to their similar names. He also advises Polka not to visit the manor due to an ongoing police investigation. In the manor's front hall, the twins observe Iwanome questioning maids about the arsonist. Takaru, accompanied by bodyguards Taipei and Bao, approaches and discusses the recent events with the detectives. Iwanome mentions the fire-breathing bug as a suspect in the arson case. Takaru expresses his desire to see the bug captured to prevent further damage to Shinoyama Security's reputation and mentions the negative impact of Phantom Solitaire's actions on the company's stock price. Ares notes that Takaru's subordinates may be dangerous individuals. Iwanome instructs Ares to have Pop Tozawa and Yatsu on standby in case they need to deal with the Shinoyamas. 
he reveals that he has a lead in the form of a Shinoyama family photograph, identifying Polka Shinoyama as Rosin's younger son. Takaru watches the detectives leave and contemplates Iwanome's integrity. Meanwhile, Zaioyu listens in on Polka's conversation with Misaki and Takumi about handling the house guests and silently vows to expose the imposter. Takumi is hiding under his desk during his lunch break because Iwanome and Ares have paid him a visit. Iwanome wants Corpse God to tell his fortune. While Ares, being superstitious, follows Misaki into the divination room to observe the proceedings along with Seo and Zaioyu. Corpse God informs Iwanome that he cannot divine the location of escaped convicts, but if he has precognitive abilities, Iwanome would consult him to prevent future murders. Corpse God clarifies that he can only trace past paths and the infinite paths in front of Iwanome. Seo and Zaioyu privately doubt Polka's abilities, with Zaioyu considering the possibility of reporting any suspicious behavior to the police. Corpse God starts the fortune telling by alluding to Iwanome's specific police division and the information he knows Takumi can easily look up. Iwanome becomes more interested when Corpse God mentions the various arranged marriage candidates his family wants him to consider. Corpse God then alludes to a grievous scar in Iwanome's past, comparing it to a severed wing that continues to cripple him unless it remains unhealed. Iwanome asks how he might heal it, but is more interested in knowing if the person responsible for the scar has their own path. Hasarogi begins autonomously writing a message, shocking Iwanome. Zaioyu speculates that Corpse God must have been practicing this magic trick. Iwanome reads the message and is visibly disturbed, immediately demanding to know what Corpse God knows. In a flashback, Miyabi Hasarogi tosses a pack of Marubo cigarettes to Iwanome. Inside the cigarette pack, there is a folded piece of paper with a simplified symbol drawn on it. Iwanome studies and memorizes this symbol. After confirming that Iwanome has memorized the symbol, Hasarogi burns the paper and makes a grim declaration. He states that the symbol serves as the signpost they must follow and also as a one-way ticket to death. In the present, Corpse God refuses to explain why he drew the symbol on the paper given to Iwanome and advises him to follow his heart. Iwanome regains his composure after losing control of his emotions and hands money to Corpse God to cover the session and any damage to his outfit. Misaki informs Seo that the visitors are policemen, and Saioyu considers Iwanome's abnormal reaction. Afterward, Corpse God talks about the incident, and Takumi asks him about the message written by Hasarogi. At the Yudaokoru bar, Iwanome confronts Lisa about her involvement with Hasarogi and the message. Lisa denies knowing anything and claims she merely rented a building to Polka as a favor and to gain favor with the Shinoyama group. Later, Iwanome and Ares leave, and Lisa discusses the situation with her lovers. Zaioyu decides to investigate Yudaokoru's staff. Corpse God explains that Hasarogi is an internal affairs inspector, and Takumi expresses skepticism about him being a proper inspector. Hasarogi demands 1 million yen to reveal what he wrote on the paper, revealing that the message involves one of his lingering regrets. Solitaire returns to Tokyo Penitentiary and purchases information about the symbol from the grocer, learning that it is similar but unrelated to an insignia used by an old Central Eastern European Knight Order. The morning of Solitaire's comeback performance, the group becomes aware of dirigibles invading Shinjuku's airspace, all sporting the simplified symbol. Corpse God recognizes the symbol as the emblem of the fallen empire from which he hails, leaving everyone stunned. There is a flashback to the Imperial Palace of the Bayani Empire, where Isli's sword frail shows Corpse God the empire's emblem. The young emperor proudly explains that he redesigned the emblem. In the present, the symbol on the dirigibles in Shinjuku's airspace is identified as the emblem of Corpse God's fallen empire. Members of an organization discuss online the symbol's appearance and its potential consequences. They debate whether to hide it, claim it's attributed to a cult, or view it as a trap. Solitaire, who has been shot while broadcasting, discusses the symbol and offers a reward for information about it. He shows a mannequin death on his livestream. Iwanome and Ares discuss the symbol and the message Polka wrote during the fortune edling session. They suspect Solitaire's involvement and the symbol's connection to Miyabi Hasarogi. Solitaire purchases information about the symbol from the grocer, who charges a staggering amount. He learns that the symbol is of significant value to him and could shape his destiny. Seo Shinoyama discovers Polka's true identity as Corpse God and believes his story about reincarnation from another world. Corpse God discusses the possibility of using memory-altering spells but is hesitant to do so. Misaki questions Seo about Polka's murder but ultimately believes in her innocence, especially after Seo's unique logic involving sharks. Seo learns about Polka's plush toy, and Takumi tries to explain the situation, leading to a humorous exchange. 
Takumi and Corpse God discuss their next steps regarding the symbol's significance and potential shadowy organizations. Corpse God, wearing fortunate Ling attire, discusses the emblem and the ongoing case with Takumi. They mention public safety's involvement and Inspector Miyabi Hasaroga's disappearance. Hasarogi corrects them about his disappearance, indicating he was taken by hired assassins rather than the enemy he was chasing. Zaioyo overhears the conversation and wonders about the group's intentions regarding police corruption. He briefly eavesdrops before offering assistance to Seo in the kitchen. Iwanom briefs the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department Task Force on Solitaire's history and suggests they may cross paths with Solitaire while pursuing the symbol. Two disgruntled Tokyo detectives express their dissatisfaction with Comp's three members' presence and Iwanom's leadership. Corpse God provides a fortunate session to a middle-aged man, Shouta Yamanura, where he delivers a cryptic message about changing paths. Solitaire attends a fortunate session under the guise of Yamanura and questions Corpse God about the emblem. He also realizes that the emblem he's offering a reward for differs slightly from the one Corpse God drew. Solitaire confronts Zaioyu, believing him to be Corpse God. Zaioyu, unimpressed, engages in a rooftop battle with Solitaire. Polka and Corpse God have vivid dreams and visions, revealing their past and their connection to the emblem. When Corpse God wakes up he receives a mysterious phone call from an unidentified individual who knows about the bastard child of Sabaramond. Zaioyu continues his fight against Solitaire. While, Takaru Shinoyama observes the rooftop battle and plans his move. Lemmings watches the rooftop battle from a higher vantage point. Fire-breathing Bug criticizes the bastard children of Sabaraman for involving a child, Polka, in their activities. Corpse God inquires about Sabaraman's location and Bug's affiliations with the Biandi Empire or the Kingdom of Nyanil. The raincoat Bug wonders if Polka is pretending to be ignorant but believes otherwise when Polka confirms that he is the same as the bastard children, an enemy. Zaioyu and Solitaire engage in a rooftop battle. Solitaire claims to be searching for Miyabi Hasarogi, but Zaioyu questions his true intentions. Lemmings intervenes in the fight, and Zaioyu questions the relationship between Solitaire and Lemmings. Solitaire implies a connection with Lemmings to avoid suspicion but worries about Lemmings' unpredictability. Raincoat Bug contacts the Shinjuku Community Safety Division, and Ranmaru Yatsu and Danjo Tozawa investigate the situation. Corpse God senses the disturbances and expands his necromantic temple to locate the sources. In another world, Isla's sword flail reflects on her relationship with Corpse God and their unique mentor-pupil dynamic. The rooftop battle intensifies, and an unnatural chill sweeps over the area. Corpse God observes the ongoing fight and prepares to intervene discreetly. Solitaire deploys a smokescreen to escape, which attracts the attention of Yatsu and Tozawa. Corpse God manipulates invisible hands to capture the combatants. Solitaire escapes with the help of balloons and baffles Lemmings and Zaioyu. Corpse God captures Raincoat Bug and realizes that she is connected to the emblem investigation. A confident man monitors online discussions about the supernatural events and plans to harness the power for his group's benefit. Various characters, including Lisa Kiraki, Misaki Sakamiya, and others, react to the unfolding events in Shinjuku. Thank you for watching till the end, and please don't forget to subscribe.